Hello, Derek. How are you? <laughs> Here we go. It can. Yeah, oh. time to start. Oh. Wake up. <laughs> oh, oh and, and the, Robin comes. The, the, the typical walking. Yeah, 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 like, yeah come on, come yeah. on. <laughs> You're getting excited. Now you can go back to sleep again. Yeah, yeah, oh. exactly. Oh. Hello, everyone. Hi. So, rain outside. How beautiful is that? Beautiful rain. Yeah, I love it when it's yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like the heat and the humidity. No. It's like, you know, yeah, one day, two days, but then I'm over it. It's like, you know. So, but, is, you know, you live nice. sometimes close and go. That's why I hated it. Yeah, it was like, yeah, oh. Yeah. And it was like, you get tropo. It's like hot and humid, humid and hot. And it's like, it'll never stop. And it's like, oh, up here. When, when I came up to Toowoomba, people said, oh, why the, are you going up to Toowoomba? It's so cold. And I said, bring it on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Promised land. So, it's not cold. We no. are summer, so it's good. Um. Okay, I'm preaching again on Sunday. Yes, and I think part two of Fear of the, the Lord. Lord. Yeah, wow. probably the third morning <coughs> chat we talk about Fear of the Lord. Well, we had um, the interesting thing is that you know we had a guest speaker. Yes, and you know this whole yeah. thing about about um, I guess you know that he was talking about prison ministry, so that's a little bit more fear of the land law and, and consequences, and consequences of actions, yeah, you know yeah, and yeah. so what are you taking are you going to look at consequences of actions and stuff like that yeah i'm probably focusing on um uh, people that sort of overcome it and just pursue god nevertheless huh? they have a healthy fear of the lord and god instilled that but they're still pursuing god so um i got intrigued you know one of the stories i share is um david king david so he's the king of Israel, he got his capital, Jerusalem, and then he has this idea that he wants to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, to the capital, and have a temple there, you know, just a place of worship for God there. And the Ark of the Covenant is the seat of worship. Mm. You know, it's the throne of God, basically, mm. Mm. Um, coming from Moses, and he built it according to the pattern he saw in heaven and stuff. And so he's so excited about it. The ark was lost for a while. It was among the Raiders the, of the Lost Ark. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. No, it like was Hollywood movies among like the Philistines. Oh, of course it was. And yes, then you know the Philistines felt a little yeah. bit cursed. The ark of the you know did a few things. They sent it back, and so he, David is so excited. The ark of the covenant. We got it back. Let it come to Jerusalem, and they built a new oxen cart, put the ark on the back, and got going to Jerusalem and then it was a bit of an incline and the oxen stumbled which threatened to make the ark slide off the cart and there was one guy that just helpfully extended his hand just to steady the ark that it wouldn't slip off the cart which is what a you yeah, think it, is a good yeah, idea isn't yeah, it you yeah, wanted to protect yeah, it yeah yeah yeah, yeah it was made it, of gold and stuff yeah, you don't yeah, want to yeah. damage it you don't let damage and stuff but God judged that action, that irreverent action, and he struck that person dead. Well, yeah, that's there are so many stories like that that story, you scratch your head. So I'm curious what you're going to make of this, because the thing is that I've often heard this one, and I have puzzled as to why would God do that in terms of the fact that he did all the right things. It's yes. like, hey, I'm just protecting yeah, yeah, the yeah. ark, and he, he gets struck down. So yeah, what's, it, what's your take on that? Well, it gets even worse. You could say he's the innocent guy. He just followed the king's command. He was just... You know, uh, a servant there, you know, if anyone should have consequences, it would be David. Yeah, but you'd sort of think uh, the servants who are guarding this and walking alongside it, if the cart is falling off and stuff, they're not sort of saying, no, I'm not going to no, touch no, that. No, of course not. It's like, of course they've got a responsibility yeah, to look yeah, after yeah. their yeah. charge. And so it says in the Bible, David was afraid and angry, angry and afraid. Why was he angry? You know, that's, that's a probably interesting reaction. But I can understand he was afraid. And he said, wow, wow, if, that's, if God is like that, I cannot bring the ark to Jerusalem. I cannot come, let the ark come to me. And he left the ark where it happened. Yeah, yeah. on the cart. Yeah, and, I can't and that, that. That, that location. No, okay. he, he didn't bring it further to Jerusalem. He, he, he got afraid and left it with whoever was living there. You know, just... Well, we parked the ark here. I don't know how God... Someone's can garage. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I can't understand how God can come to me. He's so scared. And then, you know, all these months, the ark was actually there. The household was blessed because of the ark. Mm -hmm. And everyone could see the presence of God was blessing 
the, the so the Philistines, it was a curse, but here it actually became in Israel. A yeah, this is you know it's God of Israel. That's the nation he picked. So and David saw the blessing. Everyone saw the blessing, and then he took a second attempt, and you know courage to bring the Ark of the Covenant. And this time, he he actually investigated, and he transported the Ark according to God's command and design, because you can read it in the Bible. And the ark wasn't meant to be on an oxen cart, even a new one. No, they had these rods yeah, in it, didn't they? Yeah, they had and these rods like, yeah, and, you... and it was carried by right. people. And every six steps, it was carried by priests, every six steps he slaughtered a, a fattened calf and I think an oxen. Like every six steps. Can you imagine in today's terms it would have cost millions to transport the ark, you know, the 23 kilometers or whatever it took. I can't remember those stories. Oh, you can! No! It's fascinating! No, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of thinking, are you for real? It's like, you know, so every six steps, we're talking about, you know, from here to here, and it's like, you know, oh, stop, we're going yeah. to have another slaughter. And it's like... Yeah, and not in... Do you, do you know how expensive that is? How many oxen and, like, got slaughtered along the way and... Is that because of the blood covenant again? Is there, yeah, is there sacrifices something? to God, like yeah. um, blood atoning for sin and covering sin. So, you know, the first attempt with the oxen cart, that's how the ark came back from the Philistines. Mm. They put it on an oxen cart. Mm -hmm. And they thought, well, yeah, anyway. So that's how they came back. And then they just had a new one and did the same. So, and God judged it a bit irreverent, a bit easygoing. Like, and this time... David went the other way. He really investigated how to transport it correctly. And then he sacrificed all along the way, actually honoring God and recognizing the holiness. You know, that's the proper fear of the Lord. You watch yourself around the Ark of the Covenant about the innermost presence. So fascinating. And everyone rejoiced. So this was properly fear of the Lord, but... Um, David was so ecstatic that he undressed to his undies and... Oh, know, that's when he was dancing. Yeah, dancing and, wildly. And his wife his would wife look at him as well. Think, hugely oh, yeah. embarrassed yeah, about him. Yeah. But he was so joyous yeah, that yeah, uh, yeah. the Ark of the Covenant was coming. So, um, what do you make of it? Well, I was just thinking that, you know, David could have used a dose of the fear of the Lord when he was looking at Bathsheba and all these other yeah. kind of things that he was getting into a lot of trouble. Yes. And it's like, you know, sometimes the fear of the Lord is so reverent that he does this and yes. then other times you so conveniently forget about it don't yes but that's typical us like you know if let's say if someone gets struck dead in front of you mm. you have the fear of the lord in you for a little while mm. and and then you know memory of that fades and mm. you become complacent mm. and then you know yeah he fell into sin again until there were consequences because his child died didn't it yes yeah, yeah. yeah. so um yeah. and so um what are you going to bring out of that except for the story? I mean, how do we apply that to our life? Yes, good, good question. I mean, number one is, um, I, I'm probably, I'm not dismissing the story. Yeah. So God is a holy God. And if you come before him irreverently, even, you know, just, oh, I didn't know. But, you know, you just didn't take the trouble of finding out. So God is not pleased by that. And we shouldn't be probably surprised if he's not pleased for a lack of fear of the Lord. You know, too easy going, complacent stuff. So I'm probably taking that seriously even for myself. But I'm, I'm also even more intrigued that David knew what God was like. He knew how holy, jealously guarding his holiness, glory of his name, and how dangerous it is for sinful people to come near him. And yet, in the end, he wasn't deterred by it. Mm. He, you know, like, it, it was a bit hard to get there, but he brought the Ark of the Covenant mm. to Jerusalem, and he was so joyous about it. That's what I like about your, your first one, when it was about Moses yeah. and the mountain. Yes. That, you know, your, your key verse that you said, that, that this is done to test you. Yeah. And you brought something very interesting out. The testing is that... Will you actually still hang around if I show myself to be yes. holy? Yes. You know, you've seen all the miracles, yes. 
Now I'm going to sort of say, yes. hey, I'm here. Yes. Are you still going to hang around yeah. or are you going to be too afraid? And, and that's yeah. the same principle. Yeah. That's the same principle. So we experience all of the goodness of yeah. God. So if God reveals himself more and a greater depth of holiness and fearsome presence of it, you know, do we have the courage to keep going and embrace the fullness of God, what he's really like? Yes. Yeah. Wow. So looking forward to that one. Yeah, yeah, David. Oh. Yes. <laughs> It's an interesting topic, isn't it, fear the Lord? We don't actually touch that. It's almost like, you know, poking the bear. But the thing is that, you know, um, you know, God's holiness is to be revered, but it is not something that we are to, you know, fear with terror. We are to fear it with awe and, and respect and, and, and understand that we are in the holy presence. Yes. Which means is that, you know, God's love allows us to be in that presence. Yes. That is actually one of the beauties is that God is actually calling us into more and more of that experience of who he really is. Yes. That's amazing. And I mean, that. you know, our hunger is for revival. Yeah. We want the presence of God powerfully in our lives in the church. Now, you know, the Ark of the Covenant is not just anywhere. Mm. The Ark of the Covenant is the most holy place on earth mm. it's the the seat of god's throne this is where he dwells this is where he said this is where i will be you are really you got to be really really careful when you get that close to god mm. and so you know if if you're living a fair distance from god maybe you're not we're not seeing that much you know no one gets struck down but we actually want a church that is on fire with the presence of god yeah. and when that happens yeah, we've got to be a little bit more careful how we behave around the presence of God. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So come along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid. Come to Edgar. He's going to share us about how we can be in the presence of God without getting singed. <laughs> yeah, and we're pursuing God. He's worth it. Yeah. Have well, a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.